The SEC and scumbag regulator Gary Gensler have been sanctioned in the debt box case by the judge. They will have to pay debt box legal fees and much more. And Empower Oversight has filed another lawsuit against the SEC over the Bill Hinman and Jay Clayton Ethereum conflicts of interest. And Gary Gensler is looking for more budget to go after crypto, AI, and much more. And Fidelity is not giving up on their Ethereum spot ETF, pushing back on the SEC, uh, allowing them to stake within their ETF. We're going to break this down and much more. Let's get into it. Welcome to the Thinking Crypto Podcast, your home for cryptocurrency news and interviews. If you are new here, please hit that subscribe button as well as the thumbs up button and leave a comment below. If you're listening on a podcast platform such as Spotify, Apple, or wherever you get your podcast, please leave a five-star rating and review. It supports the podcast and it doesn't cost you anything. Well, folks, huge news around the SEC. It's not a great day or week for the SEC. We got a lot to discuss here. Eleanor Turret of Fox Business is reporting a Utah judge has found the SEC engaged in bad faith conduct against crypto firm Debtbox. The judge has placed sanctions on the SEC for the abuse of judicial process, ordered them to pay the legal fees of Debtbox, and denied its motion to dismiss the charges without prejudice, meaning it will not be able to refile the same charges at a later date. Now, folks, we've been following this for months where the judge threatened that sanction and we saw the SEC lawyers outright lie to the court. Folks, the SEC is supposed to uphold the law. They're supposed to be the good guys, neutral parties, but we see they've become politicized and they have spit in the face of the law. They have walked all over it. They don't care. That's why Judge Sarah Netburn in the Ripple case said the SEC lacks faithful allegiance to the law. In the Grayscale lawsuit, the SEC got called arbitrary and capricious. Unbelievable, right? And then the Government Accountability Office shot down the Saab 121 uh, rule bulletin that the SEC put out and called it unlawful. And the House Financial Services voted to repeal it. Now, it still has to make its way to the House floor uh, to be fully voted on. But guys, do you see what's happening here? We are dealing with a scumbag regulator who does not care about the law. This is someone who will ask you to come in, talk to you as if he's doing things in good faith, and then stab you in the back and break the law to try to trap you, to put you in some sort of trap, guys. It's unbelievable what we're dealing with here. And maybe this is a symptom of big government and we need to fix it. But clearly, Gary Gensler is a scumbag. He doesn't care about the law. He reports to Elizabeth Warren, um, who is being controlled by the banking incumbents who are getting disrupted. That's the game here. Shut down crypto as much much as possible so wall street can come in and take over if they can kill any aspect of the crypto market they would do it because i'm telling you jamie diamond and the banks they don't like that capital is leaving their investments and funds and going into crypto and going to etfs they don't like that they've been controlling that game for a long time so this is what's happening but the judicial branch the checks and balances, the three aspects of government are coming in hot and heavy here, not putting up with the bullshit and the unlawful activities of the SEC. So this is really great to see. Now, here's the problem, though, with this nonsense that Gary Gensler is doing here. Who's going to have to pay the legal fees and costs for debt box? The SEC. But where's that money coming from? The taxpayers. This is why I'm so pissed off. My tax dollars are going to this uh, nonsense. And here, Eleanor uh, Terrod highlighted, quote from a legal source who wished to remain anonymous. The SEC basically just forced the bill on American taxpayers for their own unlawfulness. This is why we need to call our representatives, use social media to our advantage, go amplify this content, highlight the unlawfulness, highlight the lies and hypocrisy so that we can drum up as much noise to force the members of Congress to act against Gary Gensler. Remember, Patrick McHenry threatened a uh, subpoena against Gary Gensler for not handing over the FTX documents. He still hasn't handed them over. So I'm hoping Patrick McHenry will do this, folks. But the great thing is the SEC is losing in court. They're getting all their bullshit nonsense 
getting uh, shot down by the courts, even in Congress, such as Saab 121. So that's the great thing that we got going for us. And the industry is going on the offensive. Kraken is suing the SEC. Coinbase is suing the SEC. Ledgelex is suing the SEC. And there's a lot of folks backing up these companies. So the financial services a GOP account here tweeted out, Gary Genser's SEC continues its losing streak in the courts. A judge ruled against the SEC in a debt box case, imposing sanctions on the commission for acting in bad faith. This is one of the most alarming examples yet of Gensler's abuse of power. Well, I hope you guys do something about it, and I'm going to keep putting pressure. I'm actually going to be talking to a congressman this week, Wally Nickel. Uh, he actually did a great job. He partnered with Mike Flood, Cynthia Lummis, and some other folks to repeal uh, the SEC's Saab 121 uh, bullshit bulletin. So that's a good thing. You know, we, we got to uh, keep putting pressure on these members of Congress to keep the SEC in check. Here's what Senator Bill uh, Haggerty had to say. The SEC is not above the law, and today's decision reinforces this fact. These sanctions ought to remind the agency that there are consequences when it abuses its power to target crypto and blockchain innovation. Now, Ripple's Stuart Alderati, he's the chief legal officer, weighed in. He said, today, a federal court sanctioned the SEC for abusing its unique status to present evidence that was false, mischaracterized, and or misleading. If anyone thinks this conduct by this agency under this leadership is limited to this case, I have a bridge in Brooklyn to sell. So, folks, we are dealing with a scumbag regulator who has no allegiance to the law. Um, and in fact, the SEC today dropped their budget requests for fiscal year 2025, asking for $2.594 billion, up $100 million. They want more of your tax dollars to go abuse crypto companies and other things. Uh, Gary Genser mentions crypto AI, data transparency, and beefing up cybersecurity as areas of focus for the extra funds. Now, at its core, the SEC, of course, has a job to do to protect investors, but we've seen they've fallen far from that uh, core mission, folks. They've become political. Like I said, Gary Genser is just a gimp on a leash controlled by Elizabeth Warren. So we got to keep fighting. Now, folks, a great way to buy crypto is uh, Uphold, which you can get Bitcoin and altcoins. You can also trade precious metals on this platform. I've been using them since 2018 and they are fully reserved. They have a great app. And uh, if you'd like to learn more about Uphold, check out the link in the description. Now, another hit against the SEC, Empower Oversight, which is the nonprofit whistleblower organization, has filed a new lawsuit against the SEC. They've been going after the SEC for years, exposing the Bill Hinman conflicts of interest with Ethereum, um, even Jay Clayton. They're trying to get more information around Jay Clayton and Bill Hinman and what other communications they had with different firms. Uh, and I think Jay Clayton has gotten off scot-free because Bill Hinman, I've often said, they, they're going to call him the drunk uncle, the guy who said things, you know, don't listen to him. But remember, Jay Clayton, as the SEC chair, gave his rubber stamp of approval. He endorsed the speech, which Bill Hinman gave. But Bill Hinman was uh, getting paid from Simpson Thatcher, which was part of the Enterprise Ethereum Alliance clear conflicts of interest. And don't just take my word for it. The SEC Ethics Office in these emails were revealed by Empower. They warned Bill Hyman, hey, you can't do what you're doing. It's a conflict, right? But he ignored it because he was getting paid, folks. And I'm not so much mad at the folks at Ethereum or whoever else, A16Z. I actually don't care because I know people in business try to push the envelope, as it would say, to try to get things in their favor. The point is, the people at the SEC are supposed to be the good guys, are supposed to be the people who uphold the law and would say, you know what? No, I can't do that. Or no, thank you. And walk away. Right. But Bill Hinman, we know what he, what he did. And Jay Clayton endorsed it. And of course, the clear conflicts with Jay when he ran out the door of the SEC just the day before he filed the case against Ripple, which um, has XRP and competes with Ether for the two and three spot at that time. So it's unbelievable what's happening, but more power to Empower Oversight. And they are not focused on crypto specifically. They sue every agency at the government anytime there's overreach or unlawful activity. So they are a government accountability nonprofit organization. Please donate to them. And uh, they're fighting. I love it. They're putting the pressure on there. And it's it's exposing these uh, the corruption that's been at the SEC for a long time. Um, and there needs to be some sort of overhaul. That's why Congressman Warren Davidson put out the restructuring SEC Act. 
uh, where it, it would change the whole setup and make it less political and uh, there will be more accountability. So we got to keep fighting, folks. And we see the crypto industries going on the offensive. Kraken is suing the SEC. Coinbase is suing the SEC. Ledgelex is suing the SEC. And here, uh, G. Kim, who is the general counsel and head of global policy and digital of digital assets at the Crypto Council for Innovation, he said the Crypto Council just submitted an amicus brief in support of Coinbase challenging the SEC's denial of its rulemaking petition. The TLDR is the SEC's pursuit of its flawed interpretation of securities laws through regulation by enforcement while refusing to engage in rulemaking is a violation of the Administrative Procedure Act, the APA, and has caused and will continue to cause significant harm to American businesses in the new digital age. So he provides uh, more details, but it's a very long thread, but that's the TLDR, folks. So we see many advocacy groups are uh, coming out and supporting the crypto exchanges and crypto companies against the overreach by the SEC. Now, folks, once again, Elizabeth Warren is Gary Ginzer's handler, right? And she's the one that has him on a leash doing all this nonsense. And that's why she came out and said, I'm forming an anti-crypto army and all that. And we know attorney John Deaton is running against her. We need John to win, folks. If you haven't donated as yet, please go donate. Follow him on his Twitter profile as well. Well, Elizabeth Warren and her cronies were at some sort of event. And I'm not even going to play the video because it's actually nasty. This 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 woman, um, uh, her name is uh, Karen Spilka, spewed a bunch of nonsense, uh, lies and hyperbole. Some of it just nasty, man. And, uh, you know, first she said he's a crypto bro. Obviously, he's not a crypto bro. The man's just an attorney, uh, came in and helped out XRP holders who he saw the injustice done against um, XRP holders in the crypto industry. But he was doing non-crypto stuff for years and still does non-crypto services, right, as an attorney having his law firm. Then she said he wrote a book, which is about 300 pages of him talking about how tough he is. Wow. And Eleanor Terrett of Fox Business did a great job calling out her lies here. Um, and, you know, obviously John has a, a, a rough past, man. I have his book. I read it. And um, that is not a book. That's not what the book is about. So, you know, once again, using hyperbole, she even said, I think he has as much of a path to victory as an IVF embryo in Alabama. Wow. But, you know, one thing that came, I took away from this, they're scared. The fact that she has to call out John Deaton who's just an attorney, not some political powerhouse that has been in politics for years, right? He has no, he has no political uh, background. Obviously, he has legal background and he's a fighter and he understands the law. He believes in the constitution and so forth. But the fact that they have to resort to hyperbole and lies, it shows they are scared. That's why Elizabeth Warren sent out all those emails begging for campaign donations when she heard John was running. That's why she's been begging other Democrats to come help her um, and much more. So unbelievable they're resorting to this. But in it, when you step back and look at it, the fact that someone of her caliber, meaning that she has the branding, she has a ton of money, she's been around for a while, that she has to take time to talk about John Deaton in this way? <laughs> she's scared we got her on the run here we got to keep fighting now we got some updates around etfs bitcoin and ethereum as well so james safert of bloomberg is reporting the following fidelity is not giving up on ethereum etfs and not giving up on the sec allowing them to stake within the etf our base case is still that these aren't going to be approved so james is saying that uh, the SEC, based on all the different things that are going on, conflicts and much more, are not going to approve. And I think Gary's going to take this to court. Um, to, he says, to be clear, I don't think they should be denied. But at this point, I think they will be. So I think his instincts are right. And I, I'm also the same mindset. And, you know, I recently interviewed Fred Rispoli. The fact that, uh, you know, we had to go to court to get the Bitcoin ETFs. <laughs> and then it was still a three to two vote by the commissioners, Gary being the third, right? Hester Perez, Mark Ueda being uh, two. The other two Democrat commissioners voted no, even though the, the judge called them arbitrary and capricious and said, you should approve this. It's unbelievable. So good luck with this Ethereum ETF. But I think it's going to go to court and Gary Gensler is going to take another big loss. Now, with the ETFs going live, we're seeing RIAs and wealth managers 
are starting to adopt this, folks. And here on Bloomberg TV, Grant Engelbart, Carson Group Vice President and Investment Strategist, sees a handful of advisors allocating 3.5% of Bitcoin ETFs on average to client household portfolios. So it's coming, folks. I've been telling you all, crawl, walk, run. The awareness and education is actually taking place right now. It only started about a month ago after the ETFs went live. And we've seen the inflows. There's still a bunch of other RIAs and people who need to get on board. And it's going to be a process, of course. All right, guys. Final news here. CZ. Remember CZ? Changpeng Zhao, <laughs> former CEO of Binance. He tweeted out earlier in the day. He said, launching a new project. No new tokens. Education project. More details soon. Um, he says, my next next project, Giggle Academy. No logo yet. Free, uh, basic grade one to 12 ish education for all, no revenue, gamified, adaptive. Um, so I thought it was going to be crypto related, but it's very much education related. And it looks like a good initiative to help bring education to uh, kids around the world. So that's really great. Um, you're putting the money to good use here. Um, and, uh, you know, I'll try to get him on the podcast to talk about this and if he'll actually do anything in crypto, you know, moving forward. All right, folks, be sure to check out our other sponsor, VeChain. Go to VeChain.org. VeChain is one of the top layer one enterprise blockchains. Partner with BMW, PwC, Walmart China, and a Boston Consulting Group building great Web3 products. It is a highly scalable and low energy uh, usage blockchain and uh, once again working with big enterprises around the globe so be sure to check out vchain go to vchain.org link will be in the description thank you guys for listening and watching and i'll talk to you all later